Alright, hell yeah. So I just got off the phone with my brother, you know what I mean? Because I wanted to talk about uh, some math problems. But, you know, he did, he graduated, uh, he got a PhD in quantum physics. So he graduated from MIT. And uh, I definitely just like classical mechanics, uh, physics. It's fascinating. But, you know what I mean? I, I think I have the, the tools, you know, to... Uh, you know, slowly study quantum mechanics, and uh, so it's just kind of fascinating. What I'm, uh, I guess, the most important thing is to ask questions. Well, it's tough because if you don't have someone to answer your questions, well, th then you're just left with, um, you know, kind of learning. I'm just going to learn from YouTube videos, which is decent. Um, so here is the take-home points, and it is kind of fascinating. Uh, you have two different ways to study quantum mechanics, uh, two different models. The newest model is working with vectors and so uh, and matrices. And, and from that perspective, you might be able to model quantum mechanics in, in just such a better way. Now the understanding of the matrices, well, that, that might be um, difficult unto itself. The other model that started was kind of with Schrodinger, Schrodinger's equation. I don't know if I'm saying that, but just the wave function. So you have an equation uh, of a, a wave function, and now you're trying to in, interpret that wave function um, from, a, from a perspective of, of measurements. Um, but from, from my take-home point, very limited was it's just it was the idea that um that is a difficult way to learn quantum mechanics maybe uh, but i mean currently that that's the way you're going to uh, classically that's the kind of way you're going to learn quantum mechanics is you know learn the wave function do part do equations based on that wave function and, and see how uh, the challenges are is it's difficult to get a worldly perspective even on just using the wave function. Um, uh, but I, I guess I guess from the the matrices side um, might be more accurate and, and a better model. But I would imagine that's even harder to get kind of a worldly uh, uh, approach on that. So anyway, so that that's just fascinating. I'm going to keep my eyes out for those kind of two different models uh, uh, of studying. Now, at the end of the day, it's like you should have an intuitive. I didn't ask these questions, but even with physics problems, it's just like, well, one, what question are you asking? You know what I mean? And can you get a ballpark answer for your question? Like, if you can't do that, um, then then maybe you're asking too specific of a question. You know what I mean? Um, but at the end of the day, you still have to, if you're going to add 1 plus 1 equals 2, you still have to kind of know what numbers are. You, 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 have, you have to at least, if you, you at least take the axioms that you do know and then start playing around with them. All right, so uh, I guess what I'm more f most most interested in quantum mechanics is the idea that you have basic elementary particles um, that have different properties. I was telling my brother, I was just like, well, you have uh, you have uh, like a, uh, this YouTube video showed that you had. Um, particles that kind of theoretically um, cannot overlap. You know what I mean? They, they kind of, in, in essence, they kind of hold their own three-dimensional space. And then you have other particles that, yeah, definitely can kind of overlap on top of each other, kind of occupy the same three-dimensional space. Now, at, at the particle level, even at the particle level, um, occupying three-dimensional space, that might not be the terminology to use. So just I'm I'm keeping that in mind for myself. And even my brother is just like, I don't I really don't know what you I was like, well, what are you talking about here? And then he's just like, oh, you're talking about the Fermion particles. And uh, so then we talked about um, how Fermion particles, if I'm saying that right, uh, yeah, they they do not share the same quote unquote three dimensional space. And uh, my brother's like a great example of that is the electron. And uh, how um, electrons? Uh, th this is the whole. This is the whole reason why you have two s orbitals, then like five. Is it five p orbitals? You know, and, and then and then seven. Or I don't know. Is it? I, I don't know the numbers. But uh, 
But I guess from our conversation, back to basic chemistry, is that you hydrogen and helium. Hydrogen has one electron, and then helium, let's take helium, you have two electrons, and uh, they're both in the s orbital. And, uh, um, and this introduces our first quantum mechanic perspective of that uh, those two electrons, one has a spin up and the other has a spin down. And even those terms are just like, well, why just say that? You know what I mean? Well, why, why don't you just say, hey, one's got to spin this way, you know what I mean? And then the other's got to spin this way, you know what I mean? Because the up and down comes from angular momentum. Like, if, if I say, hey, I'm going to close the door this way, hey, I'm going to put a torque. We all have to agree on what type of torque you put on it. I, I said I'm going to... Uh, my distance out to the doorknob is that way, and then I'm going to put a force at a perpendicular angle, so I'm going to have an upward torque when I push the door this way. Now, if, if I pull the door out this way, well, guess what? The direction of the doorknob is that way, the direction that I'm, I'm pushing is that way, and then so we have a downward, we have a downward torque. Like, literally, I don't know, you know, just the spin up, spin down, it's just like every time you say that, you should just say exactly what I did and be like, well, it's related to torque. Because everything in the universe is related to angular momentum. So even an electron has some angular momentum. And uh, now, I, now I've got, got to make sure I don't, um, you know, get into the weeds here, because... One of the one of the aspects I asked my brother was just like, well, this this was fascinating because I was just like, okay, so an electron, um, my understanding ha has a base unit of mass. So my understanding it has a base unit of three dimensional space. But l let's just say that that's not true. You know what I mean? So that was my interpretation of what an electron is from a classical perspective. And I says, well, if it does have a spin. You know what I mean? Like, how fast is that spin? And can other spins be slower? Um, and I was thinking, it's just like, well, if an electron does have a three-dimensional space, it doesn't, because um, this will answer that question, then when you rotate it, it has some sort of radius from the central axis. And if it's like a planet, you can find the velocity of the planet. The linear velocity of the planet is the, is the radial, radians per second, basically the spin, times the radius, and that would be linear velocity. So I asked the question, it's just like, well, um, are, are things that have spin, like an electron, limited by the speed of light due to their size? Like, obviously, they'd have to be really small. Um, so if, if you had a planet that was spinning, you know, it, it, theoretically, if you spun a phys three-dimensional physical object fast enough, like, hey, maybe you could get the radius, maybe you could get the, um, the, maybe you get the outside surface of that sphere to go faster than the speed of light. So I was just, I was just curious about even electrons. Is there a limit on spin? And and, and the answer is, no, it doesn't work that way. Uh, electrons do not have three dimensional space. And so actually, I didn't follow up the question of like, well, is that spin, like, do we know how, do we know how many revolutions? you know, per a time frame is that. I really didn't ask those questions, but that, that fascinates me. But I guess ans asked and answered, because the question was, is that I was bringing up is like, well, no, they answered the question of an electron. Uh, my brother said it's proven, and I thought that was interesting. I was just like, well, um, you know, proven to a high level or, or what, you know, from a skeptical perspective, but uh, an electron will never stop spinning. So that is just a fascinating concept to me. Anyway, I gotta see if I gotta put more time on the clock. All right, hell yeah. But uh, and and I don't know. Maybe maybe that's it. Maybe I don't need to put more time on the clock because uh, that might be a complete thought on electrons and uh, how well it identifies fermions. Oh, and then just even hearing my brother is just like, yeah, every fermion either has a, a spin up or a spin down, um, angular momentum. Now, from my from from my perspective, that that's fascinating. Is it like is there is there no in between? Like uh, so yeah, that's fascinating. Like uh, obviously, obviously you have something that yes, for from from like hey, let's say you could take a snapshot of it and you can see that it's spinning in this direction. You know what I mean? So is it so you know? 
is that whole because that atom could rotate i mean but but it's still spinning in that direction you know what i mean so um th that's fascinating to me and maybe that is a good question because uh you you can use atoms as quantum computers because they will hold a spin in a particular direction and uh forever you know what i mean um so that that's fascinating the uh Anyway, and maybe, maybe that's not true, you know what I mean, but those, those are the things that I'm kind of fascinated in. Uh, but yeah, fermions, either a spin up and a spin down. So all fermions can't overlap, they have to share different orbitals. Um, and I got, I got my question answered. Uh, an electron isn't um, necessarily a, an energy source, you know what I mean? I was just like, well, everything with an electron... You know, isn't that like, you know, have, isn't that energy or something that can be harnessed? And it's like, nah, not really. It does have mass, which we know to be like using Einstein's equation to have, you know, that much energy or whatever. But an electron in itself is not like a storage house of energy or anything like that. Now, electrons can interact with other electrons. You, you do a chemical process and, and uh, that, that, uh, I guess that's that. So that that was um, that wasn't what I was interested in. But yeah. So just at the end of the day, I think quantum physics is just like. Oh, and we talked about. I guess we'd end the video like this. Is just like. Uh, I guess the consensus was that for this next part that I'm going to talk about was just yeah, kind of learn from different professors. And we you have the internet right now. I mean, you can take basic 101 quantum physics courses from a lot of different lecturers. And, uh, and at least use the wave function equation and kind of get used to that. And uh, it'd be fascinating to even pull up, you know, learning from the matrix model. Um, because, I guess, yeah, in, in, in quantum mechanics, it sounds like there's two different models. And whether my brother learned from the wave function, you know, the, is it just the Schrodinger? It's just phi, you know what I mean, capital phi of x, and it's the wave function. Uh, I'll have to even look up, is that just Schrodinger's function, or is that uh, a combination of a couple of things? But anyway, um, and the fact that you do have more of a matrix model that can, can, um, can be a better, better modeling tool for learning quantum mechanics. So I, I found that interesting. Take home point though is just like quantum mechanics is still just a bizarre hard thing to learn because it's just really hard to actually get a tangible grasp on like, well, you know, how does it work with reality? It's just, or can you come up with an example of where quantum mechanics, you know what I mean, uh, just a common every day. It's just like, oh yeah, that's quantum mechanics. I can see how that works. And, um, so, so, yeah, that's the hard part about it. And I don't have an answer for that. Um, but going into it, uh, I guess the question was just like, because I, 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 cause I talked to my brother a couple months ago, and he's just like, yeah, you know, like one professor online does the, or I just mentioned one professor online is just like, hey, let, let's start out just in pretend land and uh, talk about um, an analogy, you know what I mean? That That is like a quantum analogy but it's just like, nah, we, we, we kind of shared the same sentiment that sometimes it's just, it's just like, tell me, tell me how it is, you know what I mean? Because you, um, you still have to kind of learn the quantum framework, which is not intuitive, you know what I mean? So it would be like adding numbers for the first time, 1 plus 1 equals 2. Like that might just, you might have to like, wait, wait, wait what are you talking about? Like you, you, that, that you might have to pause... And that, that problem, 1 plus 1 equals 2, might take you 10 minutes to be like, well, we, we go back to the axioms of numbers, you know, well, foundationally, is this what we're doing? You know what I mean? And, and so I think in general, from my perspective, yeah, I guess that's quantum mechanics in a nutshell. And, uh, and, and then, uh, you know, uh, yeah, the wave function, yeah, I'm sure the, it, the wave function has to, all, all the problems are answered using differentiation. So differentiation of a very difficult equation, yeah, it's, it's like you have to deal with partial derivatives. Um, I know that much for a fact, but uh, yep. So anyway, uh, but the way I even study classical physics is just like, who the hell cares? You know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, can you guess an answer? You know what I mean? Are, are, you, in, are you even in the same ballpark? But that's the thing. 
is that quantum mechanics, you at least have to know the elements of the ballpark. You know what I mean? Like, are you eating a hot dog? Are you sitting down? You know, did the game start? You know, just basics like what, what day, what, what month of the year is it? And are you at the right ballpark? You know, are you watching a baseball game or a football game? You know what I mean? Those things, e even for classical physics problems, um, that's what I do. It's like just the, the, the friggin' I just guess. You know what I mean? It, you know, so when, when you go flip to the answer in the back of the book, uh, you're not off by a factor of 10. You know what I mean? And your units are right. You're talking about the same thing. So anyway, um, so that's my introduction to quantum mechanics, and, and we'll see if I learn anything about it. But I guess the take-home point is, like, I'm just not too interested because it doesn't have too much practical application. Uh, you know, I can't build a, a, a building out of light. Um, you know what I mean? Um, so... Yeah, uh, but it, it's it's not, I mean, yeah, like light and photons and waves and stuff like that. I'm not into radios. Um, so, yeah, it's just, for me, the practical application, I just might not be interested in learning about it, uh, of how it works. But from the idea that it gives a better understanding of potentially how uh, the universe works, that is what I'm interested in. Because classical mechanics is amazing in the fact that, hey, given where we live, we can, you know, we have a big force of gravity at the surface of the Earth, all over the Earth, that hardly changes from the, the sea level to Everest. You only weigh an eighth of an ounce, you, you, weigh, you weigh eight ounces lighter on Everest, that would be a good weight loss plan, you know, and if you want to hike Everest. Um, oh no, you weigh, yeah, no, you weigh lighter, you weigh lighter. Yep, yep. You also weigh lighter moving to the equator because the Earth is spinning faster. You know what I mean? So just all, all very tangible. So physics is very tangible. You know what I mean? You just explain it very easily, and you can go to places where a wave is just like, no, we're not, we're not, we're not little particles um, that can be in different places at the same time and and, uh, and do all that sort of stuff. So practical application. Yeah, it's kind of fascinating. It would be interesting what I think is practical and what I can just shrug, or what I can, what I, problem sets that I could just be like, who cares? Yeah, obviously that's the answer. Because my perspective on that would definitely help, um, you know, other students learning quantum mechanics for real um, because I have that perspective. Um, that's my confidence going into it, but, uh, yeah, 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 it's, uh, yeah, I, I know it's insanely complicated. Um, I mean, just the problems are hard. And just, just wrapping, you're like, what, what the hell are we even doing? You know what I mean? Wrapping your mind around anything. All right, I'm going to leave it at that. That's my introduction to quantum mechanics. And uh, hell yeah.